Hi guys, what's up? I'm Mary Richardson. I help professionals and entrepreneurs to get past the things that are keeping them stuck, whether that's a self-doubt, anxiety, procrastination, even recovering from a narcissistic relationship. I help people get through that. This video is all about the signs you may have been raised by a narcissist. I'm going to give you five signs that you may have been raised by a narcissist. Um, let's review what a narcissist is. Maybe you don't even know. You've heard the term, but you don't know. All right, a narcissist, they, the hallmark of that disorder is that they lack the capacity to empathize. So you and I, as normal people, can put ourselves in other people's situation and really understand how much emotional pain they might be in. You know, they had somebody pass or they have had you know, a breakup or, you know, something, some sort of trauma. And we can easily empathize with other people and genuinely offer, you know, support. The narcissist comes from the ego. They don't have the capacity to empathize. They fake it. And a covert narcissist will fake it in front of an audience, whether that's other family members or in front of their workmates or they'll fake empathy saying the right thing even you know appearing to do the right things give somebody a hug but they can't maintain that for very long because there's no depth so maybe the next day maybe they had this whole scene where they played out how much they were feeling for this person and the next day it's like almost like they forgot about it because it was all fake. So the narcissist coming from a standpoint of ego, they're only looking for admiration and attention. So they love creating these scenes where everybody around them is experiencing trauma, drama. And the reason why narcissists surround themselves with those types of people and really pick at these people's pain points is because the narcissist does this for supply. Narcissistic supply means that the narcissist is essentially feeding off of others' negativity because it makes the narcissist feel better about themselves. So they want to know everything that ever went wrong in your life so that they can feed off that supply. So if you had a narcissistic parent, they most likely um, do these five things. So they didn't value your emotions, number one. They didn't value your feelings, number two. In fact, if you never had any feelings, that would probably be great with them. If you never cried, that would be even better. They will often be condescending, patronizing, because they don't want you to ever have more than they have or what they would perceive more than what they have. They probably groomed you to expect to be invalidated. So you, your feelings, your emotions, constantly putting, being put down or as inconvenient, or maybe they just ignored you, ignored you when it had a problem, um, not teaching you how to have great coping skills. Um, narcissists don't have that empathy. They don't want it. And the reason why they're so toxic is because they know what they do is wrong. They just don't care. So they don't ever get better because they never seek help. I won't say never, but more often than not, they don't want help because they really don't think they need it. It's everyone around them. So a narcissistic parent um, totally devalue your emotions, your feelings. They invalidate you, anything you're going through. Uh, I call it the dog and pony show is the next sign you may have been raised by a narcissist where they behind closed doors are very different than when they have an audience. So when they have an audience, I call it the dog and pony show because they may have dressed you in the right clothes, um, taught you good manners, which is a good thing, but um, the person that you see behind closed doors as a child may have been very different. Um, maybe they even ignored you and your dreams. Uh, they stepped on your dreams, told you you could never do that or you'd have to have too much education to do that, or just constantly invalidating every idea that you have. The next sign you may have been raised by a narcissist is that they expected perfectionism. Um, they may have groomed you to be perfectionist, be perfectionist. So no matter what grade you got, it was never gonna be enough. 
If you got an A, why didn't you get an A plus? If you made the team, well, why didn't, weren't you picked to be the leader of the team? Um, it, it was just never enough. No matter what you did, it was never enough. So as children, though, we always step it up and we think that I, we always blame ourselves, right? That, oh, I did something or I could have done it better. Or I should have gotten a better grade or something. But as adults, we begin to become that parent to ourselves again, where we expect everything we do to be perfect and we get very, very tired of never winning. So what happens is over time, you can have strong anxiety, even depression, because why try? If it's never gonna be good enough, why even start that business, right? Why even go after that career? Why even go to school for that career? If in your mind, you becoming you become that parent to yourself and you don't even wanna try. So the dog and pony show, really dangerous. And as kids, you can, kids know, kids know, why are you different, <laughs> you know? Why, why are you ignoring me when we're alone, but in front of the camera, it's, it's over the top fake. All right, the next sign is that um, you may have been raised by a narcissist is you may have trust issues as an adult. You may not trust others. You may not even trust your own emotions because you had to shut those down when you were growing up. You may have loads of self-doubt. And you may be so used to walking on eggshells around that narcissistic parent, wondering when the next narcissistic rage was gonna erupt, that as an adult, even though we never wanna repeat that, the brain loves what's familiar and you might find yourself in that type of work environment or, or in a relationship with a narcissist where that narcissistic temperament comes back. Um, so if you are have gotten away from these things and you know that you were raised from a, by a narcissist and you want to heal, that's excellent. And I always say the best revenge is moving forward, moving forward in a positive way, healthy way, healing yourself um, with lots of help and, and being the best version of yourself. Because narcissists never, ever, ever want you to have more than they have. They never, ever want you to question them. So the fact that you are even watching this video and considering that you may have been raised by narcissists tells me that you probably are on a healing journey. And that is excellent. Um, because you're worth it. You're valuable. You have great ideas. Um, I'm sure you have dreams in your heart that you want to see come to fruition, leave a better legacy than what you were given. And um, that's phenomenal. So developing great coping skills is the first step. Uh, you probably, if you were raised by narcissists, you probably experienced at least one adult narcissistic relationship, uh, which may have left you emotionally drained, feeling like every time you weren't around that person, you had to heal, like you feel, felt like you had to heal your soul every time you weren't around them. Maybe you felt like since you're so used to that narcissist sabotaging your thoughts, maybe you took on that and you were just sabotaging yourself, your your future income by racking up, you know, credit card debt or just living outside your means, sabotaging yourself in loads of ways. Um, so if you've been through that and now you're wanting to heal, you probably have some anxiety. And that's the first step is getting getting control of that anxiety because those anxious what if thoughts will try to take you down rabbit holes. And it's very frustrating because this is your own mind. However, the good news is it is your own mind and you can control it. So if you may have been raised by a narcissist and you're really upset, frustrated by that, the first step is healing yourself. So being aware of what you're thinking can help you overcome anxiety and even help you so it doesn't become even into panic attacks or depression. Um, you don't have to be perfect to have a great life. Um, so overcoming anxiety is huge. Better coping skills. Um, can be huge. If you're suffering with anxiety and you don't know, it feels like it's controlling you where you're not going out, you're not, you're avoiding situations, 
Uh, maybe you have social anxiety. I get you. I have that too. And I really don't like being in large crowds. It's just not something I want to do. I'm not interested in making small talk. It doesn't interest me. I don't like, you know, just, I, I would rather just get right to a deep conversation. But um, if you are wanting to get past your anxiety, you can actually do that. Instead of talking about all the anxiety symptoms, know that you have to get to the root cause. Untangle it and instill better coping skills. And I can help you do that. You can leave a comment below. If you have questions about this video, of course, write them in the comments. If you're on a healing journey, that's awesome. You're probably more healed than you give yourself credit for. So uh, be kind to yourself, tell yourself good things. Um, the only way to really heal from narcissists is really when be aware of the red flags of the narcissist and just distance yourself. Um, That's it for this video. I hope you're healing and doing well. Um, be safe and think better thoughts. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.